Hello everyone, I'm Melissa Steinauer. Thank you for joining me here today. Today we're going to talk about a question that a lot of people have, and the question is, why do Christians seem to have so many problems? You know, being a follower of Jesus Christ doesn't necessarily make all of our problems just go away. The Bible clearly tells us in Matthew 5, verse 45, that He gives His sunlight to both the evil and the good, and He sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. And John 16, Jesus Himself says, Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart, because I have overcome the world. Christians, they're not exempt from problems because we live in this fallen, sinful world. But you know, in Jesus, we have someone who understands our problems. He understands our sorrows, and He will lead and guide us and carry us through them. We can gather some really important truths on this subject when we look at Joseph in the Bible. You know, here was a young man who clearly was the favorite of his father. In fact, the Bible tells us that his father Jacob loved Joseph more than his other children because Joseph was born to him in his older age. But his brothers, they hated him because he was the favorite. I mean, imagine the problems that would cause. And as the story goes on and on, we find that his brothers actually threw him into an empty cistern and then they pulled him out and they sold him to Midianite traders who took him to Egypt and they sold him as a slave to Potiphar, who was an officer of the king of Egypt. Now the Lord was with Joseph and he succeeded in everything that he did. And Potiphar, he noticed, he noticed Joseph was faithful and honest and true in the things that he did. He took notice of it because when we live that way, people take notice. And so he put him in charge of his entire household and everything that he owned. But the Bible tells us that Joseph was handsome and Potiphar's wife, she thought so too, because she wanted Joseph to sleep with her. And when he wouldn't, she made up a lie about him that caused him to wind up in prison. But even in prison, the Lord was with Joseph and he showed him his faithful love. And the Bible tells us that the Lord made Joseph a favorite with the prison ward. And it didn't take long for the prison ward to put him in charge of the other prisoners. Now, as it turns out, two men who worked for the king wound up in this very same prison too. And they had dreams that really disturbed them. And God gave Joseph this special wisdom to be able to interpret dreams. And it was the interpretation of dreams that actually eventually got Joseph out of prison. And at 30 years of age, he was placed in charge of the entire land of Egypt by the king. You know, the king took his signet ring off and he placed it on Joseph's hand. He put a chain around his neck and a robe on him. And Joseph was placed in second command of Egypt only behind the king himself. When a famine hit the land of Canaan where Joseph's father and his brothers and his entire family were, they were sure to die. They were running out of food. And it was Joseph who welcomed them to Egypt and provided for their needs. And you can read about that whole story in Genesis chapter 42. Now we really don't like to hear this, but our problems, they have a purpose. And today I'm going to talk about five purposes that our problems have. Number one, our problems, they prepare us. You know, Joseph found himself where he didn't want to be, a cistern, a slave, in prison. But it was in those really hard times that God was preparing him for something greater. And it's in the hard times of your life that God is preparing you for something much greater. Number two is problems, they strengthen us. You know, it is quite possible that Joseph had a soft and easy life. He was his father's favorite. He was loved by him the most out of all his brothers. He was given a special coat of many colors. You know, to say that he was pampered is probably quite true. While his brothers, they had to work. And God had to make Joseph into a man that he could actually use. Romans 5.3 says, We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. And James tells us in James 
chapter 1, verses 2 and 3, that when troubles come, to consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So when you face problems, allow God to work in and through those problems to strengthen you. Number three, problems build our faith. You know, we know that refiners use fire to purify gold. Fire causes those impurities to rise to the surface where they can easily be removed. And 1 Peter 1.7, Peter explains that trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. You know, through all the trials that Joseph went through, his faith grew because he told his brothers, he said, you intended to harm me, but God intended it all for the good. You know, he, he said that he brought me to this position to save the lives of many people. The Bible tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when you face problems in life, turn to the word of God and allow your faith to grow. Number four, problems cause us to depend on God. You know, when we depend on God, we find that God is with us in our problems and in our trials. It's often in those times of when we face the fire that we feel Jesus the closest, closer than we ever have before. One of my all-time favorite verses is Isaiah 43, 1 through 3. It says, Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name and you are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. And when you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. And number five, problems prepare us for ministry. You know, when we go through the fire, so to speak, and we make it out to the other side, it is our testimony of what God did in and through us to the world that changes other people. It's when we go through the trials of life that who we are and who we serve comes out for people to see. You know, it's like when you squeeze an orange, juice comes out. Well, when you squeeze a Christian, Christ should come out. Our problems are a testimony to the world around us. And we are not here for ourselves. We are here to draw other people closer to Jesus. You know, there was a time in my life where I went through a very serious medical condition where I was in a lot of pain for a number of years. And I found myself every Sunday going to the church altar and crying out to God because I needed to believe in healing. I needed to have my faith grow and I needed to have strength to get through. And I thought I probably looked like the weakest person in the world to this church, but it didn't matter at the time. I needed Jesus. And um, I got through that. I got through that trial. And a few years later, there was a young girl from that church who got a hold of me. And she said, would you pray for me? Because I'm going through this really hard time. And I know you have a lot of faith because I watched you and I watched how you never turned from God in what you went through. So it is, it is in the trials and the tests of time that people are watching us and they're watching to see if it's Jesus that comes out of us. And it's those trials and how we handle them that can draw people closer to Jesus. You know, I want to close by saying, are you going through a problem right now? Are you going through a test? Maybe it's a fire that's in your life and it is too much to bear. Well, the Bible tells us to share each other's burdens because in this, we are obeying the law of Christ. So I would love to pray for you. Please reach out to me at melissasteinauer.com and send me a message. And also send me your topics that you would like me to speak on. And I will share again with you next week.